Okay. Okay. That's why you're born. We're we're here with the famous Bill Mosley. Right. Okay. Now tell us. Now tell us about how you got into acting. I don't know. Probably a bad childhood. Um, I think the first time I acted, I, I just, you know, was always a, just a histrionic little fellow. So I always would uh, jump up at the at the burger joint in my hometown of Barrington, Illinois, and start mm-hmm. dancing to songs on the jukebox. <laughs> okay. I just, you know, I did characters. I like to watch TV. I had a pretty good fantasy life. So okay. I guess that's really what it came, where it came from. I mean, it wasn't okay. part of my family. I'm, I'm, you know, my my parents were a part of something called the Barrington, Illinois Play Reading Group. And uh, they were not actors, but they had a bunch of friends in our little town, and and they would get together every month or two and uh, at a different house and put on a play, a Broadway play, Mm -hmm. and everybody would uh, would read it. I mean, there would be costumes and makeup, but they would just uh, read the play holding the Samuel French copies of the play. And... Mm -hmm. um, did uh, you know Sunrise at Campobello, A Thousand Clowns, The Lottery, a lot of cool plays, and uh, the ones that required a child or children, I was always drafted as like the kid or at least mm-hmm. one of the kids, and uh, so that kind of started me off. Um, also, when I was in uh, fourth grade at uh, Countryside School in Barrington, Illinois, uh-huh. this is going way back. <laughs> okay, this is deep tissue massage. Um, we did a play called uh, Young Christopher Columbus, uh-huh. and it was about basically Columbus about to embark to the New World, and I played his, his son Diego, and I had okay. like a little, I had a little, Diego a little, <laughs> <laughs> I had a little, I had a little black vest and some blue tights, and they and they brought me into the gym on a on a on a white Shetland pony. Oh, oh, that was a big great. And you know, and I I was saying goodbye to my father who was on this kind of weird you know, grade school set of a, of a ship. And he was looking down at me and I said, bring me a heathen, father. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was my Okay, answer. okay, great. And no. I think that was when, you know, it really, I, I knew, you know, that I wanted to be an actor. Okay. Yeah, the first Otis line. <laughs> okay, now you've been in many famous uh, horror films. Yes. So tell us how you got into the first one. Uh, the first one I got into was called uh, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. It was also directed by the Chainsaw Massacre Part 1 director, Toby Hooper. And uh, that was back in 1986. Um, in 1984, um, I had made a short film called The Texas Chainsaw Manicure. And this is about a woman <laughs> about a woman that goes into a beauty parlor and gets her hair done and then she wants a manicure and the beautician goes manicure and in the back of the beauty parlor this this silver door slides open and out comes Leatherface with a chainsaw and the mask and the <laughs> bloody smock and everything and he you know rushes over to her and, she, and the, the woman is under a hair dryer and she's like oh it's screaming and Leatherface comes over and starts uh, sawing her hands and uh, she screams and he's sawing and she passes out and then they kind of bring her back and uh, she goes oh 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 Oh, and she's got a, it's, okay. a, it's a fabulous manicure. Okay. And then she comes out to uh, the truck to her, presumably her husband. And that was my cameo uh, as uh, I played the, uh, the hitchhiker from the original Chainsaw Massacre. I had like a, called it's, it's a birthmark on your face, but it's called a wine mark because it's kind of purple. Yeah. And uh, just like Ed Neal in the original Chainsaw Massacre. And... Um, Anyway, I, I just, uh, you know, she comes and she goes, look, honey, I got the best manicure ever. And I go, hey, that's great, honey. Uh, we should celebrate with some head cheese. And I had actually gone to a butcher and uh, gotten a piece of head cheese, which isn't really dramatic looking, but you just know that it's like everything. It's like the tails and the yeah. lips and the snout of a pig all ground up and it's a bunch of jelly. Um, anyway, so I, I offered up this piece of head cheese and then, you know, licked it in one take, which was a bad idea. <laughs> but anyway, I got, I got a friend of mine uh, walked that into uh, Toby Hooper when he was uh, at Paramount uh, working with Steven Spielberg on Poltergeist. And um, back then it was on a VHS tape, and mm-hmm. uh, Toby watched the manicure. It's about five minutes long. And... Uh, my friend also gave me Toby's number, so I called him up and said, I'm the guy that did the manicure. And he said, hey, that's great, Bill. Uh, you know, if I ever do a sequel, I'll keep you in mind. I went, hey, all right. 
Uh, no, actually, but the first thing he said was, who played, who was the hitchhiker? And I said, well, that was me. And he goes, oh, you know, if I ever do a sequel, I'll keep you in mind. Mm -hmm. So two years went by, and I was a writer uh, for magazines in New York City. And I uh, didn't really think much about the chainsaw manicure and that kind of, you know, that kind of Hollywood promise, you know, yeah, someday, you know, <laughs> okay, kid. And um, anyway, the phone rang one night. And it was a guy named Kit Carson, who had, uh, who was at the time married to Karen Black and was a hot screenwriter in L.A. And he ended up um, uh, uh, writing uh, the script for Texas Chainsaw 2. And he called me up and, you know, asked me if I wanted to read the script. You know, and I was like, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, I want you to, I'm going to send you the script. And uh, from L.A., I was in New York. And um, look at the part of uh, Platehead which later got changed to Chop Top because there was some <laughs> okay. problem with a Masters of the Universe character of the same name. <clears throat> so I got the script. I read it. It was awesome. It was a big part. I was amazed. And I thought in my little mind that I, I knew I, I couldn't audition. I wasn't really a good auditioner very well. So I thought that actually what I would get out of this is maybe they'd fly me to L.A. So I'd get a free trip to L.A. Okay. And instead, I, you know, the next call I got was from Canon Films legal department saying, do you want to negotiate the contract or do you have an agent? And I had met an agent from William Morris at a Christmas party a couple months earlier. So I said, well, let me get back to you. So I called her up. She, of course, was happy to negotiate a deal because it was free money. Mm -hmm. And um, she called me back and said, well... I've got I've got some good news. The good news is they want you to play this part, um, yeah, but um, uh, the bad news is they're only offering uh, scale. And uh, you know I was a member of the Screen Actors Guild because I'd done a Miller beer commercial, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, "Ooh, that doesn't sound good. What what is that?" And at the time, as a writer, I was making about two hundred and fifty dollars a week, and they said, and she said, "Well, it's about sixteen hundred a week." And I went, <laughs> I, "I think I can handle that." Okay. <laughs> and then she said, uh, "And they want you to shave your head," and I said, "Because uh, you know, for the prosthetics or whatever was going on there," mm -hmm. and and I said, uh, "Okay, yeah, no problem." And she said, "So I told them you wouldn't be able to work with a shaved head, so I got you an extra $5,000. <laughs> I'm just like going, oh, my God, that's insane. So that was really how I got into the business. And I was so excited. You know, I went down, and my head was shaved, and, you know, I was like uh, basically Bill Mosley, as we know him, was gone for about two months. Okay. Down in Austin, Texas, I had the time of my life. It was like it was the first time I realized that you could run away to the circus, and they would not only let you stay, but also it was, uh, you know, it was a pretty good living. So okay. you know, that was it. That yeah. started my long road of you know here I am today. Yeah. So what did you do after that? What series? Um, after that, I uh, got my pregnant girlfriend, and uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, well, I got her pregnant before then, but after, after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you. <laughs> you, you, you! You with a pillow. You with a pillow under your blouse. All right. yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously you have children then. Yeah, I do. I do okay. actually have two daughters. But um, you know, my then pregnant girlfriend and I, you know, headed west. It was almost like uh, if we'd had a covered wagon, it would have been more appropriate. Okay. And we headed west to uh, to L.A. because I was encouraged by Kit. Carson's man, uh, agent or manager, she said, you know, you're pretty good at this. You ought to try uh, try your hand at Hollywood. And that's all I needed. I'm, I'm as stupid as the next guy. And it was like, yeah, Hollywood. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I headed west. No, you were only in a hit film. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I mean, that was kind of like, you know, a lot of horror guys, you know, are kind of, you know, one and done, you know, which is... No, I mean that's even that that's great. I mean it's great to you know have a character and a, you know a character success. Um, but I you know so I came out on the on the wave of all that optimism and you know mm -hmm. everybody patting me on the back. And then uh, you know I I had a you know let's see that was 1986. So um, I finally got the character of Otis uh, in uh, House of a Thousand Corpses thanks to uh, Rob Zombie. Uh, mm -hmm. That was uh, I got the part in. Uh, November of 99. So I was in L.A. for about 13 years between Chop Top and Otis. Um, 
you know, and just, just learning how to be an actor, uh, learning about, uh, you know, how to get unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's very Learning important. About, you know, waiting on tables and, okay. you know, I don't know, standing on Santa Monica Boulevard with orange pants. Okay. Uh, you know, so there's, there's ways that, you know, you kind of survive. Plus, I had a kid and, yeah. you know, there was a lot of, you know, stuff going on. So, uh, okay, so you played know, I, Otis. I made it. Yeah, I did okay. play Otis. Yeah, I made it. I made it those 13 years. That was a tough gap, but uh, I did make it. And, um, and then I uh, dressed as Chop Top one night for a little stupid, that no, wasn't stupid, okay. It was a small, uh, you know, relatively insignificant uh, horror award show at Universal called the Igor Awards. And they were looking for, they were looking for a, an MC, uh -huh. and uh, they knew that I was, you know, Chop Top, you know, now 13 years ago. So I came dressed as, you know, made up as Chop Top and dressed in a sh you know, kind of a shabby tuxedo. And this was back when the Igor Awards were literally out on the, they were outside. They were on some little, you know, little platform with a bunch of folding chairs. And, you know, it was, it was pretty small, um, not stupid, but small. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was basically for, you know, universal characters, actors, and directors and things. So, yeah, so it couldn't like have been that small. In-house award right. show. And so one of the awards, I was out there, you know, as Chop Top going, hey, you know, and uh, here she is, Lupita Tovar from the uh, Spanish Dracula and doing all this stuff. And then one of the uh, guests was uh, Rob Zombie. And so my then teenage daughter wanted to come because she was a big Rob Zombie fan. And so it was very exciting. I didn't know Rob's work that well at that time. Um, I'd seen him on Beavis and Butthead in mm -hmm. White Zombie. I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, so I go, here he is, Rob Zombie, you know, and I, and I had this little demon statue for him, and he came out, and uh, I found out later that that was the first time he'd ever won anything. He'd been nominated for Grammys and different things, but, okay. you know, finally, you know, he won something, and so he was very excited about that. And uh, he said that uh, when he was backstage, he was listening to me, and he said, you know, that guy's doing a decent chop top. No, not great, but, you know, he's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then he come in, then he comes out and he goes, "Oh my God, it's Chop Top! It's the guy. That's the real guy." So he was very excited about that. We talked backstage, and about a month at about a month later, I introduced my daughter too, obviously. And uh, about a month later, I got a call from Rob's uh, manager, Andy Gould, you know, telling me that Rob's film project, um, House of a Thousand Corpses, had been greenlit, and uh, that means they got the money and. Um, that's the green part um, <laughs> okay. when the light goes on. Okay. And um, that, uh, and that they wanted me to play this character called uh, Otis Driftwood. And was I interested? Now, at that time, um, I was actually persona non grata at an extras casting agency because I had, um, uh, you know, been in an extra in uh, Man on the Moon. Wasn't that the, uh, you know, the... Uh, Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was apparently some face, when he was fighting uh, Jerry Lawler, the, the wrestler, um, I was a face right next to the ring, you know. <laughs> and then I got another gig, and they had to do a reshoot, and I, I, I couldn't make it back there, so they got very upset at me, and, you know, I was no longer even getting extra work. So when he said, would you like to play Otis, I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know how big a part it was. And then, um, you know, obviously it was a big part. Mm -hmm. And uh, just had a, had a ball doing that. And uh, then, you know, had a ball doing uh, Devil's Rejects. Um, you know, and, and pretty, pretty much since then, I, I haven't really stopped working. I know, and you work a lot with Kane, right? I do. Well, we have the same manager. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to say, by the way, that, that Kane, uh, although he was not a, on screen in Devil's Rejects, was the stunt coordinator of Devil's Rejects. And, um, you know, of all the work I've done, uh, I think that was really the, the greatest stunt work that I've ever seen or been a part of. So I just wanted to give him a shout out. <laughs> Kane, I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, we're going to get to the ADR <laughs> for the film. Yeah, well, now, now I've gone horse. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing left now. Thanks.